Portrait Artist of the Year, Season 3, Episode 5. The next episode will be the semifinals. That's the exciting one. Let's get started. All right, before I go too much further in my recapping, I want to also say that this recapping is sort of like comparing how pretty is Kara Sidgwick to how pretty is Julia Roberts. And we all know that would be a ridiculous comparison to make. So that's not really what I'm trying to do with the recaps. I'm trying to look at the different styles of the painters and also what's going on with the judging and the criterion. So knowing that judging these things is, is somewhat ridiculous. It's all valid. All creative pursuits are are to be um, honored and, and everybody working on this program has just done a beautiful job. All right, so the first one up is Katie Kissoon. She is a singer. They put her in a very uh, simple uh, pose with a background behind her. Once again, they're not getting all these intricate backgrounds that they had in earlier seasons. This is season three, and by now things have kind of streamlined a little bit. Now, each model has three artists painting them, and they get to choose one of these paintings to take home with them, and that has nothing to do with the judging. So four hours in, the judges tell the artists to turn their easels around, and it's the first time the participant gets to see what's been painted of them. Now, I wanted you to get a context for how small this piece is. It's an etching. So throughout the program, you didn't really see the process, because it wasn't until he inked it up at the very end and pressed the image out that you could see what was done. I think it's a just a fantastic piece of work. I would I would love to have this piece of work. You know, so there's sometimes black and white can be just so powerful. Sometimes it's all you need in order to describe forms and shapes. It's kind of remarkable in a way. And color can be certainly what do they say? Value does the work, color keeps gets the score. No, the other way around. <laughs> value keeps the score. Color gets the credit, that's it, yeah. So here's the second um, one for her to choose from. I don't think it looks like her at all, but it certainly captures her pose as she was sitting there and certain characteristics of her face. Nice, rich, saturated paint, so good job. So she's got three lovely paintings to choose from and I'm curious to see which one she chooses and I, I always make my own pick as if I'm on the program. When I watch a great British baking show, I always imagine which dessert I'm going to eat. <laughs> so for me, it's participatory. Here's the third one. I'm not thrilled with this one, but but I love the background. I could get real interested in the background. and uh, But that's that's about all I can say about it. It's just uh, doesn't doesn't do a lot for me. But um, but well, let's let's see what Katie chooses. That's what's important here. All right, so let's take a look at Katie's pick. And it's again, a painting that would look fine in absolutely anybody's home, not just in the home of someone it resembles. So that's the one she's gonna take home with her. All right, the next model up is Rick Wakeman. He's a musician and he also, yeah, that's all I know about him is that he's a musician. But what I loved about him was he just has a lot of character in his face. I mean, there's a lot to dig into there. When you have a classically just beautiful face, there just isn't a lot to grab onto when it comes to shapes and and texture and also um, proportion. But there's a lot to work on with his face, which, which I think would be fun. So four hours in, the artists are turning their easels around, and he is absolutely delighted. And this, I do love it when the model gets excited about the whole program. And look at this, he's just, he was just so enthusiastic. So that always makes me feel good. I mean, for the most part, this program really does make me feel good. The judging infuri infuriates me, and later on it will again, but let's stay on the positive here. Here's the first one of Rick, sure does look like him. This was the, I think, the best field to choose from. Um, I mean, there's, there's no question that there's a resemblance there. Not a lot of saturated color, but I don't mind that. It's just beautifully done. The neutrals are well mixed. This person clearly knows what they're doing and knows a lot about facial anatomy and facial planes. Same thing with this one. <clears throat> um, but this person decides to use almost like a dry brush kind of technique. Not my personal preference, but you know when dry brush is done incredibly well, like, um, oh gosh, the first person that comes to mind in some ways is Andrew Wyeth sometimes will do dry brush and, you know, he 
you know, it's fantastic. So, uh, and again, dry brush doesn't allow you to carry as much paint, and so um, four hours is going to be even more limiting. Here's the one that I thought would win uh, the whole episode. I think it captured Rick. This was the most interesting to w one to watch on the program because the person, the painter, had the likeness and then lost the likeness, then had the likeness and then lost it again. And that happens to me as a painter too, and I find that fascinating. So now let's take a look at which one uh, Rick decides to take home. And I think he made a great choice. It's, uh, it's kind of the most juicy, I mean, in terms of mm, saturation of paint and intensity of all of them. All right, Rick's pick is this one. And I, I, I actually, I th thought that this was going to win uh, the whole episode. Now that kind of gives you a clue that it doesn't, but uh, but I, w I thought for sure that it would. But let's go on to the next one, because this is where things got real interesting for me as a viewer. This is Dave Myers. He's a TV presenter, and um, uh, I, that's all I know about him. But again, quite a character. It's, again, so much easier to do a portrait when someone has glasses, a mustache, facial hair. I mean, there's so much uh, more than, um, than a conventional... Uh, pretty face. So um, I, I would have been very happy with this model. So four hours in and the artists are told to turn their easels around and we had been watching the progress of some of these paintings along the way. So I wasn't surprised but he has of all the models I think the best field to choose from. So the first one up almost looks like a watercolor, but it's not. It must be acrylic. Actually, it's not just acrylic. I saw the process, and, and the moment was putting ink, dripping ink, where those real saturated places are, the greens and the purples. I don't, I don't know enough about uh, any medium other than watercolor to know what that's about, but, but I think it's incredibly effective. Um, I like the feeling of movement and, and of course, like I said, saturation of color. I'm, I'm biased toward that, which brings up the next painting, which is definitely not saturated by color. And that's, for me, a personal choice, but this is, I think, boy, for sure they got, uh, they, they know, it's a nice likeness, for sure, and shows a consistent style throughout the painting. There's so much to like here. It's just a quieter kind of presentation than the first one, but I thought, oh my gosh, these judges are going to have a tough time because all three of the paintings right here deserve to win. So what are you going to do? But then this one popped up, and this one rattled my cage a little bit in a good way. When I saw this one, I thought, and this happens to me when I see really great art, I just think, all right, I give up. I'm not painting anymore. <laughs> I'm never going to reach my goals. This is impossible. Why are we trying to do this? I mean, to me, if I painted something like that, that would be the holy grail. I'd say, okay, got it, done what I need to do, I'm out. I mean, this has everything that I strive to do. Color spots of value, masses of color, um, color mixing, neutrals against saturated color, everything that I'm all interested in, and also accuracy when it comes to um, a likeness. So here's a close-up. I mean, that is a lot of observation and a lot of work deciding on that green, how green to be on that inside lit, uh, lens, you, you know, because it's going to be grayed down by the glass. I mean, when you think about how many decisions have to be made to make this painting, it, it blows my mind, and it would be beyond exhausting. So Dave's pick. Well, I was pretty sure of which one he would pick, but I've been wrong more times than I've been right. But Dave's pick was the one that I would have picked. I just think this is a fantastic painting. I, I, I kind of can't get over it. So I'm sitting in front of my little screen and I'm thinking, okay, I get it. This guy's going to win the whole thing. Uh, you know, why did, why do we even bother showing up? <laughs> but, <laughs> but now we'll get to the real judging and let's see what happens. So now it's time for the judging. So here are all the participants. From these participants, they. The judges are going to pick three people for the semifinals of this particular episode, and from that, only one will be picked to go on to the official semifinals, which is the next episode, which will have seven people in it. And from those seven, they will pick three. From those three, there will be one winner, which will be episode eight. So 
This one was pulled to be one of the finalists for this particular episode, and I thought, yeah, sure, I agree. Let's let's keep it going. And um, and the next one was let, let's see. I have to wait just a second till it catches up. Uh, oh oh, that's right. This is the three that they chose, but I'm going to show you again. We've already seen the first one, um, which was the one that used the ink and and um, saturated color. They did also pick that print. And once again, you can see how teeny tiny it is. Yeah. So, you know, I thought that one's not gonna win for sure. But I thought the one on the far right would win because for me, it, it ticked all the boxes. And I kind of wondered if the judges, it would be nice like on Project One Runway, I know they actually have a score sheet. So it must have some criterion on it to check. But, uh, but I've never seen the judges do anything like that. Now what they're doing this year is they're showing the submission piece. In order to be on the comp competition, you have to submit a self-portrait digitally. So there is the self-portrait of the artist, looks exactly like him, and the piece that he did today. So the one on the right, remember, has had unlimited time to be done, and the one on the left was done in four hours. And once again, I thought, okay, he won the season. Done, dusted. Let's, uh, you know, we'll just see it play out. This uh, was the Rick Wakeman one, and in a minute we'll see side by side his, um, the self-portrait. There it is. Wow, really different, don't you think? Really different when he had a whole lot of time to spend on, a, on his portrait, and on the left when he had the four hours. Now, I don't have a self-portrait for uh, the printmaker. They didn't show it. And I don't know why. So we just have to skip that. Also, this episode was only 20 minutes long. It was an abbreviated episode. On YouTube, you don't get all the stuff. All right, so let's see. The winner is not who I thought it would be. And I'm not dis... This is the winner. And as we were going through the program, I thought for sure this would be the winner. And it wasn't until we got... A little further into the program and I just got so intrigued by this one I thought well he's gonna win the program uh, I mean this episode he's gonna win the whole uh, season but uh, but no he did not so he's out I can't believe it he's out and this one is in this person is going this painting in person is gonna go on to the semifinals so remember to keep the whites of your paper white, your paints wet, mask for value, mix for color. Please join my YouTube channel, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.